All right, so welcome to part three of Dad is Infected. So the thing is, what I'm doing is, in part one and part two, I got a Sentinel-1 installed, went through, cleaned up the initial threat, rebooted the machine, the additional detection features were enabled for Sentinel-1, and then continued to, to do a full disk scan, and at least at the time of the video, four other detections appeared, and I went through the process of mitigating those. So if you haven't taken a look at those videos, please like look at my channel <laughs> look at the videos go back and watch part one and part two now in part three you know i'm not going to be doing this forever right as this full disk scan continues to run i don't want to have to go ahead and manually mitigate everything so let's say for instance if we're talking about a corporate environment and i've already checked with the company to make sure i've taken care of my, my documentation my policies procedures got the correct sign offs uh, at this point, I want to make sure I move the computer into a mode where it's going to actively protect, right? And so I have I have policies here. And so we're going to go through and configure the policies because the next time I detect something on this machine, I want Sentinel-1 to go through and automatically do this, okay? Because you got to think about in the future, if you're working in cybersecurity, you're going to be doing this at scale. So we want to make sure that we prepare once the machine is on, you know, set up with Sentinel-1. Uh, I feel safe that it's not going to destroy anything so i'm going to go through and i'm going to set it up and change the policies so let's look at the default policy right now if you notice like if you look at the previous videos i was only doing detections wasn't doing anything right and so at this point i'm going to be walking through the policy and i'm going to be turning on these engines and putting this into full protection mode okay so what i want to do first of all is let's go ahead and let's look at the active protection mode which i created this group so this is not something that's in sentinel one by default i actually made this specifically for and you can configure and call it whatever you want to so i call it active protection at work we call it full file protection you know it's just different things but essentially what i'm going to do is I'm going to turn on these two protect modes so if there's a malicious threat it will kill in quarantine if there's a suspicious threat it will kill in quarantine so remember there are two categories so it's telling you right now you have malicious threats and you have suspicious threats now as far as protection level okay i can do kill in quarantine I can tell it to remediate and roll back. So here's when it's advisable. If you're working with somebody's servers, killing and quarantine may be the best option. You got to talk to your customer, understand exactly what their needs are, what particular servers are. You may have to make five groups, six groups, because some groups you may be able to kill and quarantine. Some groups you may be able to ever only detect only because if you automatically take action, you could bring down the enterprise or bring down some production application or something like that. But for this, this is my dad's machine. The risk is low. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it that wants to automatically remediate and roll back. In addition to that, I'm gonna turn on all the engines. I want all these engines to be active. Uh, and then as far as containment, so I can tell it that automatically when there's a threat, I want it to automatically disconnect from the network, okay? So it'll, which means once again, if you watch the previous videos, that means it'll still talk to Sentinel-1 and I can do stuff to it, including remote into the machine using a remote shell, using PowerShell and shell script to run commands. But in addition to that, um, it, it can't talk to anything else. It can't infect anyone else. It just allows me to be able to perform incidents, response and stuff like that. I do want to turn on the anti-tamper. I don't want my dad to be able to uninstall the software. I wanted to take snapshots because when we do the rollback feature, it uses VSS, which is volume shadow copies to be able to roll the computer state back or basically to undo the stuff that was done, damage that was done by malware, and then be able to restore it to the state prior to the malware being detected. And it uses what's called VSS or volume shadow copies, right? And then login, of course, we want login to be on. And so this says basically save logs for troubleshooting. We, you need to pull this sometimes. There may be incidents or whatever, or even just troubleshooting that we need to do. Um, so we, we want logs to be pulled and then scan new agents. So basically run a full disk scan. So whenever I install Sentinel-1 on the machine, it's going to automatically do a full disk scan. But once again, I want to be in detection mode because I want to make get that full scan first, figure out what's there, detect it, and then take action because I don't necessarily know if I can take action immediately on the machine a lot of times. So that's just a safety thing that we implement at work. And then the rest of these features, I think these are fine. Once again, this is more about setting up the policy. So show agent UI trick. You can choose to hide the agent UI on the endpoint so that the user can't see it. So in, a, in the previous video, I showed you those pop-ups that were happening on the user machines. I personally think it's a good thing if there's a pop-up saying Sentinel-1 has detected something because they're more likely to contact their IT department to say, hey, something is wrong. So I don't think that's a bad idea. So show pop-ups, we did that. We, we literally showed that on the previous video. 
blocked devices okay so what this does if device is control so this is device control basically takes charge of disabling usb ports and uh bluetooth so you can't you know you can essentially block bluetooth and usb devices from being plugged in that's another way people can infect themselves this is my dad's machine i'm not going to do that uh include suspicious threats so you can choose whether you show suspicious threats in the ur with a pop-up show warnings in case an agent has errors that's probably good because you want to use the call to the it department there are scenarios where you may not want to do this you know maybe you're keeping sentinel one completely stealth for whatever reason different organizations different policies different use cases uh showing the ui events for the last 30 the last 30 days i think that's fine i'll leave that as the default show these menu items in the ui so you can show block devices quarantine files and you may want to establish a support uh contact so that you know people know who to call i think this is something you should turn on and make sure you complete the information so that they know who to talk to in case there are issues and then this gets into deep visibility not going to cover this but it just kind of talks a little bit about some of the features that you can collect with the deep visibility product which allows you to be able to do some really digging based on certain criteria or telemetry connect like collected from the endpoints there's no need to do data masking in most cases right so it shows that what data masking i think it's just not it anonymizes certain data so focus file does it tell you i thought it told you not it said basically i looked this up just to kind of oh it is right there there's okay so when enabled the pass of zips and pdf offers documents are will be masked i don't have a need to do that here um there may be a use case for you and then you can tell us to automatically install the deep visibility browser extension so the thing is i don't have deep visibility enabled in my console so there's not really a reason to do that and then auto decommission after 21 days if my dad's computer goes offline for 21 days it'll remove it for the console i don't want to do that because i want to say yo dad you know that computer's been off for a while you're still using it you know and then remote shell this allows me to remote into it and take action so now that i feel like my policy is good i'm going to save the policy i'm going to click yes here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to the sentinels tab and i'm going to click there and i was in the policy section right here so i basically went from here to endpoint and what I want to do is I want to go to my dad's machine and I want to click on it and I want actions and I want I can well actually I can do this I want to move to group okay and I want to put it in the active protection group okay and you can see I'm getting notifications so even when somebody goes in the console if some of the other the cybersecurity mentees are moving stuff around their console I'm seeing all of that information so it's good you can kind of see how much data Sentinel One can give you for accountability and stuff like that but now what's happened is I moved my dad's computer into the the full like what's called the active protection mode that once again i just made that name up call it what you want but it's just the policy that has it on so now at this point as it continues to do the full disk scan if anything is detected it's going to automatically take action now what i'm going to do is i had dad set into the disconnect mode right so i'm going to go to endpoint actions well actually it's under response and i had him disconnected from the network um i want to reconnect into the network okay because you can see I'll show you what it's showing right here. So it's showing network status is disconnected, okay? And so I'm gonna go ahead and do response, reconnect to the network. That'll give full functionality to him again because what I wanna do is next, in the next video, I'm actually gonna be remediating all of his vulnerabilities. So it's not gonna be something super sexy that you might think, because I, but I want you to see the, re the real part of it because sometimes remediating software is just doing regular type IT stuff, regular IT functions, once you identify the vulnerabilities, I need to mitigate them. And so that's what I'm going to be doing on the next video. So it looks like console connectivity is there. Network status is connecting. So let's go ahead and see how long this takes for it to full officially reestablish. And I'm looking at the machine right now. And on the machine, I can't browse the web. Okay, let's just go to, uh, there's my dad. He's got Walmart right there. I'm going to click on the Walmart web page. Can't be displayed. And so this may take a second. So I'll pause the video and we'll say we'll come back in just a second to see if it actually connects and if we can actually browse the web. All right, so I did want to show this. All right, so the machine didn't it show console activity. It was disconnected. So once again, I did a disconnect from the network, but I wasn't even seeing connection to the console. So I did get the machine rebooted, logged into the machine. And I did issue, a, I went into uh, actions and then went to response. 
and then I try to click again and reconnect from the network. So I did see the command come through, but once again, it's still in, in kind of showing up in this connecting status. Oh, there it is. It just went green finally. So just so you know, I won't, like I'm, this is a good opportunity for me to test these situations before I'm going through some of these scenarios on the job. Because the thing is, like this one is weird because once again, I did need to get the machine rebooted and logged onto the network before it actually showed the services and I could reconnect. And the reason it was disconnected is because I had it in containment mode from a previous video. So anyway, I'm going to move on. So the next step in this video series, I'm going to be remediating the vulnerabilities. So don't forget to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for more videos on Sentinel one. And I got some really cool things going forward coming up in the future. So I'll announce those at that time. But in the meantime, I'll see you on the next video.